The former Hunters Point Naval Shipyard is located in the southeast portion of the city of San Francisco on a peninsula that extends into the San Francisco Bay. Hunters Point was operated as a commercial dry dock facility from 1869 until the Navy purchased the property in 1939. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, the property became one of the U.S. Navy's major shipyards on the West Coast, playing a key role in the Pacific Theater during World War II. Around this time, luminescent devices such as deck markers came into widespread use aboard Navy ships. Some surfaces that needed to be illuminated without using electricity were coated with a radioluminescent paint, allowing personnel to locate controls, gauges, and walkways during operations. In 1946, following two atomic tests at Bikini Atoll in the South Pacific, known as Operation Crossroads, waterfront areas at Hunter's Point were used to dock and clean up ships contaminated during testing. This resulted in the creation of a special radiation safety office and program, later known as the Naval Radiological Defense Laboratory. The laboratory, also known as NRDL, played an important role in our national defense program studying the effects of nuclear radiation. As more work began shifting to private shipyards in the late 1960s and early 1970s, use of the Hunters Point shipyard began to steadily decline until the yard was closed as an active naval facility in 1974. Hunters Point entered the base realignment and closure program in 1991. At that point, the Navy began a detailed review to determine potential radiological impacts to buildings and soil areas on the property. The process involved conducting an historical radiological assessment, or HRA, that ultimately documented findings from the assessment. An HRA serves as the equivalent to an investigative starting point that identifies if site activities require investigation. Field investigations are conducted to identify the nature and extent of contamination. HRAs are not limited to the footprint of areas to be studied. The Hunters Point HRA included a rigorous examination of historical information about any area where radiological operations could have occurred between 1939 to June 2003. It was based on expert analysis of thousands of historical records and more than 170 interviews with people who worked at Hunters Point. The goal for this process was to designate sites, including buildings, as impacted or non-impacted. This focused the search to areas where potential contamination might have occurred, allowing the Navy to further investigate and confirm if contamination existed. The HRA assessed a total of 882 sites at Hunters Point. Of these, 90 were identified as impacted by radiological materials, meaning there is the potential for radioactive materials to exist. In general, impacted sites require radiological surveys and soil sampling to determine if further remedial actions are necessary based on radiation levels in the soil or building materials. As part of the surveys and sampling, the Navy identified radiological compounds that could have been present at Hunter's Point. Although some radiological activities began as early as 1939, most compounds identified stem from the NRDL's work at the shipyard from 1948 to 1969. Decommissioning of NRDL buildings was conducted and overseen by the Atomic Energy Commission in the 1960s and 70s. Radiological materials were removed and the laboratories were cleaned to the standards of the time. Those standards have changed over the years and current work is focused on cleaning up Hunter's Point to today's stricter standards. Remaining areas designated as impacted have undergone remediation all according to CERCLA standards. This work is also being confirmed by additional testing. The Navy's first priority in its base realignment and closure cleanup work at Hunter's Point is human health and safety. The Navy is committed to ensuring that cleanup processes are properly followed and that any potential risks are managed according to regulatory guidelines, doing so transparently in partnership with the community. For updates, visit our website for the latest information.